So we're definitely tempting the demo gods here, so our ice cream is either going to be in consolation or celebration. Uh, but first, Bob needs to get things started, so we'll let him have a few seconds to get some of the demos going. There are no videos here, so this is a real live demo, and we're showing a, a little miniature data center with five servers plus a bunch of things running on Amazon. Okay, so we are with Samsung Data Systems Research America. And uh, we work with our partners, UC Santa Cruz, Google, uh, we're using Docker, we're working very closely with CoreOS and Tectonic. And we uh, are trying to build a containerized and container management ecosystem that we can use for deploying applications in the future. So we're enterprise folks. Uh, but with a twist. So we run classic enterprise applications, but we also help host services that touch millions of endpoints, and you can guess what kind of endpoints those are. And our particular group, uh, the style of operation is to stay engaged with open source communities. We, we hate fork, that's a four letter word. Um, so we contribute back and we leverage um, uh, what we get from the community. So uh, if we think about what we want to do with the services and applications we're deploying, uh, we want to push them to developer notebooks and virtual machine instances. We want to push them to our own data centers. That's where the most secure workloads or specialized workloads go. We want to push them to virtual uh, machine clouds such as Amazon or vCloud Air. And we're also interested in pushing them to the new generation of container-focused services, uh, for example, GKE. And um, so everything we do needs to scale up to extreme scale, and it needs to also scale down so that it makes sense to run it on a single developer notebook. Uh, we are very much allergic to any kind of lock-in, so portability is extremely important to us. And again, open source gives us not only control over our destiny, but transparency as to what's baked into the things that we're running. So if we look at uh, both the technologies we wor we're working with, uh, so the demonstration you're seeing here today is CoreOS, Docker, and Kubernetes. And um, we are very interested in container management as it helps us both deploy applications but also to repair them when something goes wrong, uh, scale them when something goes right, when we have a lot of customers and to handle um, rapid changes in the applications. Uh, so what do we like Kubernetes? It has an open source license. It's an orchestrator, not just a deployment tool. Um, it has an incredibly strong ecosystem of people working on it. You've seen, um, uh, you've met a lot of them here. And it has a great uh, uh, contributor community. And that was spelled right before. So time for a demonstration. Just to show you what we have here, we have some x86 micro uh, servers. We have five of them. Um, Bob will point to them now, uh, but there's a picture there. And uh, what we've done for all of our researchers is uh, gotten them a number of these Intel NUCs in this case um, and uh, the ability to do bare metal work on their own. Okay, time to switch to the demo window and here's Bob. This is all live. I'm gonna to try to go through a bunch of demo stuff really fast here. Uh, so this is a visualizer that we built. One of the things as we move towards uh, bigger and bigger scale that we're very interested in is how does the, how does the uh, resource management work? How are pods being assigned to machines? So the visualization here is the inner ring there, the, this, this fainter ring, these are, these are machines in our cluster here and as I, as I uh, go over these, you'll see different ones. Um, I'm, we're running Nux here, but I'm also running a VM here on uh, my laptop. So we're running a mix of VMs uh, on laptops and bare metal, and then I'll, at the end, I'll, I'll check and see how our, uh, how our AWS cluster is faring. So there you go, that's a, a quick visualization here. Um, but let's do some real. Let's do some real stuff. So this, uh, we, we didn't want to take too long here. Uh, this is a, uh, some of you may recognize this. This is uh, Op Center. This is where, so I'm running a Cassandra cluster here. I'm running two nodes. That's nice. Um, let's see here if I switch over to running 
uh, Tectonic UI. Tectonic UI here, replication controller. Um, the standard uh, Kubernetes UI is a nice dashboard, but the Tectonic uh, UI will actually let you change some things. And rather than do command line, I thought, well, let's, um, let's do it this way. So you can see Cassandra's running two of two pods here. I think what we should do is scale this up on the fly. So we need a lot more capacity here. So there we go. And we're going to see here. Let's see. Let's reload that. All right, so this is the Kubernetes UI. Chrome ran out of some memory there for a moment. So if I come back over here, let's check back on this here in a minute. Um, the, the scale up here as far as, um, as far as go, look, it's already up to four nodes. It'll be up, up here on, uh, up here to six fairly shortly. Okay, so as we move towards big scaled clusters running multiple workloads, big data, database kind of workloads is one thing you wanna do, but you also wanna be able to run web loads. So what we're running here is some, some uh, load sources, some load sinks. Here, let me, uh, let me just run some load here. All right, so five slaves here running the load. If I switch back over here to our visualizer, um, you'll, you'll see that there's, um, these are the load generator slaves here. These are the load. These are, these are the uh, load sinks here, so we can see where all of the stuff is running. As we move towards bigger scale, of course, what we need to be able to do is we need to do cluster analytics. So we need to be able to run big scale. We need to be able to run different kinds of applications simultaneously. We need to understand how the resource allocation is working on the cluster as pods are assigned to nodes, and we need to be able to do uh, analytics on the cluster. So you're seeing cluster analytics here. Uh, as well. Uh, this graph runs a little bit slow here, but as we sit here and wait, you'll see this is showing the request rate, um, one, one per uh, request slave. So running a bunch of stuff here all at the same time. Um, I think I want to do one more thing. just pulled the plug in the middle of a demo on one of our servers, so we'll, we'll have to give this a moment and see what happens. Um, why don't we, uh, why don't we, we up, there we go, okay, so, uh, so uh, the way I have this cluster set up is as a cluster of three machines as one zone, cluster of two machines in another zone, uh, so I just, pulled the, I just pulled half of one of the zones out, and what you saw was it disappeared from the visualization, and we're going back and looking and saying, okay, well, where did those pods get run? They're actually being run, uh, they got reallocated onto another machine within that zone. So a uh, zone kind of architecture is how you might think about laying out a system uh, across multiple AZs, across multiple data centers, or across different resource types. So, um, what should we do here? Why don't we switch back to the presentation? Uh, we can here. Let's see. Uh, let's see how our. Uh, let's see how we're doing here. I see. I, I see. I had some uh, IP addresses that weren't in, in use here. Let's see. While we were doing that, brought up a hundred node cluster. So this is a hundred node uh, cluster of Kubernetes running. I could. Sorry for the, uh, the shell foo there here. Let's just, let's just do that, right? So I've got lots and lots of nodes running on Amazon that I brought up with a single command with automation while I was doing, uh, while I was doing the other part of the demo. Cool. So, very good. We should uh, move on back to the presentation. Very good, so some points here. Uh, efficiency, data center efficiency requires scale. So to, maybe I should, maybe I should try this. So to, in order to take advantage of uh, great data center efficiency, you need to be able to run lots of different applications across a lot of different machines. You have to be able to run lots of systems on a common resource layer. And um, you also have to make sure this actually works. So one of the things you just saw me do there was uh, pull the plug. We are um, working on uh, a project which is bringing Chaos Monkey. I'm, yeah. Yep, there you go, thank you. Bringing Chaos Monkey to uh, Kubernetes into the containerized infrastructure. Uh, you, you have to, as you go to bigger clusters, you have to have confidence that running on an unstable hardware platform, you're gonna be able to run all of your loads all of the time continuously in production. So, onward here. 
Uh, areas for work at large scale. So as we move to larger and larger scales here, there are uh, some areas that we're focusing a lot more of our attention on. Um, clearly, you have to have automation in your CI, CD system, uh, monitoring and metering, which I showed you a little bit of what we're working on. Some things here, I guess we'll have to save for a demo at a future time, but uh, are clearly critical as we move towards uh, clusters of thousands of nodes, uh, the storage, the networking, and uh, of course, security. And uh, we're, we're especially interested around um, storage and networking and also monitoring with the Chaos Monkey approach to uh, optimizing our infrastructure. So, any final thoughts there, Richard? Yep, and so thanks much, and especially thank to Craig and the team at Google um, for providing all of this neat technology that we're using. So uh, with that, if Kit wants to do the formal invitation to ice cream, or we can. He must be lining up by the rocky road. Um. <laughs> nice, thanks guys. Good.